We are 24, 27 hours out from the Republic of Ireland against Australia in the World Cup. And I'm delighted to say Sue Ronan is with us this morning. Sue, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, Ger. Morning, Shane. How are things? Yeah, good. We're all getting excited. Um, yeah, one day out now. It's, it's on top of us all set. Before we get into it, uh, you broke poor Sarah Dunham's heart a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe. <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of other girls I broke hearts of too, unfortunately. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that could be the same Sarah Dunham that I brought back in later on with the under 16s as a video analyst. So maybe I made up to it. Maybe I made it up to her if it is. But, she seems, uh, seems happy enough anyway at this stage. Uh, well, you also, you get to make their lives by. There you go. You, it's resilience, Chair. Resilience. Mm. <laughs> and we're going to need a lot of resilience on the pitch tomorrow, right? Right. Absolutely, we will. We absolutely will. Um, I don't know whether you watched any of or you got to see any of uh, Australia against France last week. Very impressed with them, I have to say. Um, I, I know I've been sort of tracking them over the last year without really seeing much footage, but I, I work with a couple of the, a couple of guys from Australia and listening to the results and hearing how they were doing. And they weren't too impressed with the results about a year ago, but now they've started to go on a trajectory. I think they're unbeaten in a good few games, but I saw half of that game myself against France and oh, I was very impressed with them. I thought they were very, very fit. Um, looked really hungry, really sharp. They were quick to get up. Like they sort of sat deep to contain the Fr French, but very quick on the break to support Sam Kerr. You know, midfielders running, the wide players getting forward, everything we, we expect they're going to do. Um, but really hungry. And then when they went one goal up, um, they were determined not to concede, you know. So I think it's going to be a tough task for us tomorrow. Is the glass half full from our perspective on that Australia performance against France, Sue, the the fact that that counter-attacking threat from Australia, I mean, when it comes up against, I guess, the seven-person defence in Ireland, it could be slightly more difficult. That's the issue, yeah. So, like, I mean, I, I expect us to sit deep, really, to be honest, to contain, uh, to try to contain the Australians. So they're going to have to try and navigate their way around that because they are really, a, they're a very direct team. They're a counter, they're a counter attacking team, really. So, yeah, how is that going to work when when they're having to face um, a very low block? You know, so that's something I'm sure they've been working on themselves, but. You know, I, I still think, I still fancy us to get a, a point, to get something out of the game. Um, I, I feel, I really feel we won't lose it. Um, maybe put my neck on the block there, but I, I think we, we've enough in us to get a result. Um, and whether that's just a defensive um, performance and containing them, you know, and trying to hit them down the counter attack, I think that probably will be our philosophy to start. But I, I do think, you know, listen to all the interviews, looking at what's going on, the players seem to be well up for this. And, you know, there's going to be nerves on both sides. Of course, there's going to be nerves for our team. Most of them haven't played in front of 82,000 uh, fans. Um, they'll definitely be nervous on the Australian side. They're hosting the, the World Cup. They're the host nation. There's a lot of expectations on their shoulders. Um, but look, what an occasion. What an occasion. Wish we were all there watching it rather than back home. It's obviously been a roller coaster for various reasons in the build-up. The news this morning that Denise O'Sullivan is going to start it's incredibly important. Like it, it, you can't overstate the importance in terms of uh, the surge of energy that that's going to give the team. Like both yeah. Vera and Katie in the press conference this morning, by uh, Kathy was at it and was like, "Katie's interrupts now. We're very relieved. This is like this is this is yeah. about as good news as it could have been. It's almost as if Roy Keane came back after Saipan." Yeah. No, for sure. Denise is hugely important to this team. And, you know, I mean, the, the, you look, we, we all look at Katie and she's the leader and, and um, the high profile player, I guess, probably on this side of the, the world because she's playing for Arsenal. We hear maybe see more about how she's doing with her club than we would Denise. But for me, Denise is vital to this team. She's a vital cog. She's the playmaker of midfield. The amount of work that girl does, her ability on the ball, her ability off the ball, you know, to fill gaps to see danger to, to press players she's urging her teammates around her like she she probably has a little bit more of an impact on the whole team because of where she plays um because katie is is maybe a little bit more isolated on the left hand side but you know for me it's such such a good news story that denise was uh is fit and for herself personally it would have been a travesty if she missed out on you know this occasion to show her ability on the world stage but from an ireland point of view it would have been such a loss and yeah i'm not sure how we would replace her to be honest
she brings that little bit of aggression as well so doesn't she we, we kind of spoke after the the uh, defeat to France in the friendly game uh, at Tala Stadium how you know she gets that yellow card laid on and it was Ireland's first yellow card of the match and maybe you'd like to see a little bit more not of yellow cards but of, of I guess controlled aggression and Denise certainly has that in spades Absolutely. And she, generally she doesn't get yellow cards because she's so good in the tackle. Her timing is so good, but she definitely is aggressive. And if you, if you watch her off the ball, like, you know, she, you know, she's biting all the time when we don't have the ball. She's always biting. She's always where the ball is, you know, because she's so fit. She's so physically fit for a small, slight girl. You know, she's really, really fit. And as I said, she reads the game so well, but hugely important to us. Um, personally, I'd like to see her with a little bit more license to get forward in the middle of the park. I, I'd like to see um, us use, uh, say, Megan Connolly in there, which would give that little bit more maybe uh, defensive stability. And Denise would could be the, the number eight stroke 10 type player, you know, the box to box player and affect our attack in the final third because she has that in her locker. She can see the pass. She can slip it in behind uh, the defenders or through the gaps you know um, that's her style of play she's not going to get on the ball and spray balls like from the left side of midfield out to the right wing Megan Connolly can do that but you know she has that in, in her ability to play in, in her locker to play maybe one two around the edge of the box or slip a ball through for one of the forwards to get a strike on goal um, so from my point of view I would like to see her a bit, bit further forward but look I think she, she she's hugely important for us and it's a huge relief that she is fit um, how do we like? There's, there's definitely two schools of thought where, uh oh, Australia, home nation, eighty thousand. Kathy Freeman and speaking to them before, this could go pear shaped early. And here's the thing: if it does go pear shaped early, there's still two other matches for us to scrap and try and get four points from to get out of. So, you know, um, we have been in, in uh, tournaments where things have gone pear-shaped for us and there's no recovery, but they need to show the resilience if that does happen. And at the same time, there's also an opportunity for us to just get in under the, the skin of the Australian team who will feel all that pressure, who will feel the pressure of Cathy Freeman win the gold medal in Sydney and like, oh, in this stadium, we have to match that. And if we're not matching it after 15 minutes or 25 minutes or 35 minutes, that's where we can start to just get at them so how do you pitch that as a manager like wh what are you talking about this week to them to make sure that the occasion doesn't overawe them but that actually we use that to our advantage I think you're reminding them of all the knockbacks they've had over the years and all the setbacks you know I think we've spoken a lot now on, on this show about the resilience of this team and you know I think there was a huge disappointment after not qualifying for the last Euros we know it, that, and the circumstance in which they went out and then to see our near neighbours who you know no disrespect to Northern Ireland were a much better team than them for them to qualify I mean that that hurt the players badly I'm sure it hurt the management as well but those players that have been around a long time I mean, they knew their time was now. They knew everything was there for them, you know, to make them, to help them perform to the best of their ability. And they just let it slip out of their grasp. So I think that and other knocks they've had over the years, you know, coming back from injuries, all the different things they've gone through. We've talked about the strike, everything. I think they've just built up such a bank of resilience. And I don't think they fear anyone now. I mean, we saw them go out against USA and they were excellent in the two games against USA. Um, OK, we maybe didn't play so well against France. I, I, I can't comment too much because I was away. I didn't see it. But um, from, from what I hear, France went through the gears and, and were a level above us. But, you know, I, I definitely think we have it in our locker on any given day to trouble a team and, and certainly a team like Australia. As I have mentioned before, they're not one of the top five, six teams in the world who do find that way to win. Like against USA when we were so good, but yet they found a way to win. Um, you know, I think they're going to relish the occasion. They're going to, Vera's going to stress there's no pressure on their shoulders. There's no expectations. The whole nation's behind them. You know, I just think they're going to go out and enjoy themselves. I'd be surprised if they're caught by nerves. Of course, there'll be that tension as early on, but I think they'll be able to pull themselves out of it. Talk about the hope that uh, we get a draw out of this one. So, like, there is the hope there as well. Let's say we, we were to touch wood, it doesn't happen, but go, go, go behind. Like we found it difficult to create chances in games of late um, now the running of the likes of Marissa Shiva and Kira Carusa helps to that end and causes a bit of disruption but uh, do you have that hope that we can create enough chances to, to kind of score goals in this group? 
That's a $50 million question with this team, isn't it? We're, we're very good at keeping opponents out and we're very good at scoring set play goals, but we haven't, and, you know, free kicks, corners particularly, I suppose we haven't scored too many from open play and that's the danger. Um, we have maybe a couple of players who could spring from the bench. You have, obviously, Amber Barrett has come on and done really well and has scored goals. If we're behind against Australia, they're going to sit deep too, I think. And Amber's game is probably in behind, so that mightn't suit her. So you might be you might be looking at, do you throw in an Abby Larkin who has, a, you know, has that little bit of skill and swagger and maybe... No, no fear, you know, maybe just to get at them. And they probably don't know anything about her either. So hopefully we might have one or two from the bench that we could spring. But I, I would hope, yeah, I would hope that we don't fall behind because we, you know, I think we could be relying on a set play to equalise, as I say, especially against Australia, who won't be too open. They'll sit themselves. They look to hit care on the break then. If they've gone one nil up, they'd be quite happy with that. Defensively, as I mentioned against France, they were just so, so solid looking and, and determined and bodies on the line and they've got some big players in there like Alana Kennedy who plays at City and yeah although there was one or two we were talking about injuries and in that game against France they had a, took a couple of knocks as well one was sort of an innocuous thing another was a bad tackle and the, so I think two from what I'm reading there online those two players who'd be important players for them um, maybe uh, a doubt which w- would could potentially play in our hands. I think Tamika Yallop, who was very, very good, um, she, and she, she's uh, doubtful, I think, and Kaya Simon uh, potentially also. I don't think they took part in the last, tra- the last training session, but look, you don't know what's going on in the coach's mind. They may line up against us, but um, either way, they've got some very, very good players, but I'm still hopeful we get the draw tomorrow. Sue, with all the stuff that has been published in The Athletic about Vera and her response to that and the fact that that has become a talking point in the build-up, now it's been parked it seems for the last couple of days, how difficult is it for a squad to get over a distraction like that and how important is it that they actually deal with it and make sure that everybody is is comfortable with uh, the story the treatment of and the response from the players, the FAI and from Vera as well. How do you deal with something like that as a group? I'm sure they've had their chats about it, you know, I'm sure they, they've had lots of meetings, lots of discussions. Uh, um, and really, I suppose at the end of the day, as both Vera and Katie said at the press conference immediately afterwards, they just want to put it behind them now and they don't want it to be a distraction in the World Cup. And I think the players now, with the majority of them, if not all of them playing professionally, I, I think that's sort of really been drilled into them now that they can leave off-pitch matters aside when it really comes to it and not let it affect them, you know. So I, I think they'd be fine on that matter. I don't think uh, I don't think it's going to bother them at all during this tournament or interfere in their, their thinking or their plan or preparation for, for the games so we've no excuses really it's, a, it's as well prepared a team as it could be They, I mean obviously the, the Columbia game was a bit of a disaster in retrospect but uh, they also seem to have dealt with that relatively well um, yeah. and like we're here now Denise Sullivan is fit yeah how we got here is, is it is all a story it is all a story of resilience yeah, it is. And, and we have no excuses now. Um, when I say we've no excuses, we've no excuses to not be able to perform to the best of our ability. And whether that's good enough at the end of the day, only time will tell. And as you know, things can go, you can still perform to the best of your ability in a game and something can go badly wrong. You know, you just switch off for a minute, you concede or a referee gives a bad decision, there's a penalty against you, whatever. Or you get a player sent off for an innocuous tackle. So, you know, even the best prepared teams, something can go wrong that knocks them off their stride. But there's no excuses for them not to be able to perform to the best of their ability because you know everything is the, the preparation's been spot on the lead up right up to the to the to the preparation even you know all the resources are in place for them they don't want for anything now so they seem to be in a nice uh, home base camp in, in in Brisbane um i'm sure they've gotten gotten the jet lag thing right as well i know all the the club all the countries were getting their advice and doing what they should be doing so i'm sure they've got that as well you know spot on as well as they can um so yeah it's just getting out there and play now and, and give it your best shot because for some of those players they'll never get to a World Cup again no. uh, that's the reality of it you know no this is it it's uh, it's history in the making Sue good stuff thanks a million thanks guys take care